Welcome back to the Ring of Pain. Thanks for joining me today. We're doing something a little bit different. As always, we like to keep it entertaining and spicy. So today is going to be um, a bit of a tutorial guide to the early game, as I like to call it, or roughly the first five rooms. So um, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you know some about Ring of Pain right now basically being that it's a dungeon crawler roguelike uh, deck builder kind of mashup um, and the whole objective is really a balancing of stats uh, to make it through a series of, of rooms um, and then choose a path to initiate some sort of quote-unquote boss fight so um, I'm going to just be focusing here on single candle because I believe that's the first difficulty you start or the first candle you start with i forget if you have to unlock the other ones um and then on normal difficulty because if you're just starting the game that's probably where you're starting uh so right before we hop into the actual dungeon the first thing i do want to mention is this is kind of going to be the first tip okay um and spoiler alert if you don't want to see what items there are in the game uh, or at least some more items in the game uh but if we go to our collection and then we go to achievements, oop, there's my drink water alarm, um, and we go to achievements, you'll see that if as you unlock achievements, you get items. And this is absolutely crucial um, for having, I would say, more consistent runs that are winnable in some way, right? Like the, the, uh, the unlocks that you get from these achievements give you a win condition that you can build into, um, you know, as you get later into the dungeon. So there was just a brief kind of overview of all the items you can unlock. Um, I would definitely recommend going through your achievements and taking a look at a couple uh, that seem relatively achievable because um, they'll give you some great items. Three that I want to point out right away, die 25 times, that's easy you can die in the first room if you want to you die 25 times and you get fairy fairy heals you for five every time you exit a dungeon and it gives you four hp i think um another one that's big uh these i'll, I'll do these as a combo since they're basically the same achievement but kill 100 creatures kill a thousand creatures rapier is great gives you attack and speed and it has like this piercing effect where it'll hit the enemy behind the one you're attacking for half the damage not bad at all and then the crow, absolute just tank of a, of a mask. Um, it gives you some attack stats, but then also the passive is it increases your attack stat by one third. Um, so the more attack you have, the more potent this becomes. Um, so that's the, the combo for number two. And then the last one is, ba -ba 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 -ba, where is it? And I think it's all the way down here, yep. So play the game for 10 hours. Literally all you have to do is play. You don't have to complete runs. You don't have to unlock difficulties. All you have to do is play the game for 10 hours and you get Soul Hourglass, which doesn't give you any stats. However, it's passive read, something along the lines of um, upon killing an enemy and collecting souls, you'll do random damage to a creature based on the souls you gain if there's another damaged creature in the dungeon. So this is a huge... Uh, item to get early on and carry you through some of the uh, the later stages of the game uh, but so that's our first tip take a look at your achievements see what's there set yourself a goal all sorts of these items are great um, but those are some just some of my uh, my favorites that are pretty easy to obtain all right so what we're going to focus on here are the first five rooms because um, that's where i think it gets really frustrating for a new player because um, it's tough to identify what you need, when you need it, how to balance your stats. Um, as you can see, our stats start pretty low. We're on single candles, so all we get is a little bit of stealth chance and a clarity. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, in this first room, my whole objective is to get to all the treasure and the stat bonuses as fast as possible. Now, we have two treasures in here. They're both going to be free. They always are in the first room. And then we have one stat bonus. So, I'm going to move away from that creature. I'm going to pass over this uh, fire hive. And because of our stealth chance, we actually succeeded that. And now, I like to pick up the treasure before the stat because I want to use the stat to supplement whatever I don't get from these treasures. All right, so, 
We got bindings and heat shield. Um, in this situation, early on in the game, I like to go for defense and speed. I'm not too worried about attack because all the enemies have such low HP. So here I'm going to take heat shield because it gives me both those stats I want and it makes me invulnerable to explosions. So we're going to move over here. We took one damage, but that's no biggie. Um, and then we have boots, which is uh, defense. And then every six attacks inflict freeze on target. This is a great item. Sometimes I keep this all the way to the end. Boots are a particularly uh, scarce item slot. Like there's not a whole lot of items within boots. Um, and personally, I don't like many of the options, even like the blue and purple options for boots. So I usually keep this set of boots. If I get them, I'll keep this until the very end um, until I can maybe switch it out for a legendary. But so we've gotten both of our free items. We have nullify two explosions and we got some decent stats. So now I'm going to move over. And since I haven't killed anything in the room yet, I'm going to pick this up and I want to go for defense. Um, because I don't want anything to do too much damage to me. We have a potion in here, so we're going to make the most of that. So I'm going to go to the left here. I'm going to destroy all these enemies. As you can see, we're parrying a lot of the damage. We ha now have our freeze available. So that's a free attack for us. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to pass one more time. We're going to take this potion. And now we're going to destroy this fire hive normally this is going to do damage to you because it explodes you can read deals six damage upon exploding but because we have nullify explosion we can attack it attack it once more and it's going to kill everything else in the room you really want to use those um explosive enemies to your advantage if you can okay so now we found a finder's keepers room so in this room we're given the option to take a free item or discard it uh, in this particular case, it gives us some nice stealth chance. It does take away from our defense a little bit, but it gives us a lot of speed and a little extra clarity. So clarity will heal, uh, allow us to heal off of potions a little more. Um, I'm always wishy-washy on this item. I'll pick it up for now. I don't like getting rid of the defense, but we have uh, really nice speed. So room two, uh, very similar kind of um setup and also strategy so i've got a free item in front of me i'm gonna go ahead and pick it up right away and let's see we get icebreaker which gives us great stats all around or creepy doll which is kind of uh it's okay you get health and you get speed and dungeons have plus two cards in this situation uh we get more value out of this icebreaker one because the stats are just more in line with what we could use right now and two, plus four damage to frozen creatures is going to pair really nicely with our boots. You're always looking for synergies with your other items. All right, so we're going to go ahead and kill a couple of these monsters. Because our defense is so high, we're barely taking any damage. Uh, we freeze here. So we've got this fire bee next to us. His next move is to move again and follow us and then prepare to self-destruct. Self so we're going to move on the other side of him here. So now he's doing that right where he is. We move away. He kills that enemy for us. Okay. So we've got another free item here. Fancy tights. Again, not a terrible item. I don't even think you need to unlock this. And then eyeballs gives us clarity every time we exit a dungeon for three dungeons. Um, so I'm going to go with fancy tights. Uh, we'll check out what this last monster is. All right, easy peasy. Got a cheeky little critical hit there. Um, in this situation, I'm probably going to take attack because both my defense and my speed are pretty high, and it's not an option here. HP at 14 is perfectly fine, and clarity is more of a mid to end game stat. So we take the attack. And now he's going to do no damage to us, again, because of our heat shield. But even if he was going to, I know I have a potion here, and I have a reprieve which Reprieve will always guarantee you some potions. So I would attack him anyways to gain the souls. Souls are your currency in this game. Heal up, go into the Reprieve. And now we have an opportunity to pick up a stat card, but it is cursed. So if you look at my health bar, you can see there's a 47% chance we take damage, 53% chance we get the stat. If we do take damage, we have another potion, so I'm not worried about it. 
All right, and we did not. We're gonna grab another speed. I like to shoot for base 10 stats ASAP. So we got 10 speed there, which is very nice. And you can take the extra potions if you want. They don't do anything. Um, there's no reason to attack the owl in that room. Okay, and now room three is where you start to get a little bit more mobile and you don't have to necessarily go for treasure immediately. You don't just want to always, you know, skip all the creatures just to go for, for the treasure. In this situation, I know if I attack once more, I get a freeze. So I can attack here, parry that damage, so no damage taken. We, had, we can attack here to freeze. We can attack here again to um, kill. And then I don't know what this enemy is here, so we're kind of in a sticky spot. I may move over and be stuck between an explosive enemy, enemy and a fire hive. Which, if that happens, we still have this passive, so we feel pretty comfortable. I'm just going to go ahead and kill him. And that's exactly what happened. So, you always want to be careful when you can't see what card you're moving towards and you have these guys chasing after you. Um, because this, this would be kind of a bad situation if I couldn't move over and then nullify that explosion damage. We no longer have that, so we just get the stats from the item. We don't have the explosion resistance. Uh, we'll see what this enemy is. Very easy. Take him out. And now we have some options. So Axe is oftentimes an item I really, really like going. Uh, but not over Icebreaker right now because we get the defense. Pierce, your attacks ignore creature defense for the next three combats. This is a scroll. So it's a one-time use type of thing. Once you use it, um, it disappears and you gain its effect. Uh, okay, so this type of stat makes one of these three go up and two of them go down so we're gonna go with attack here we've got pretty nice base stats um, we're a little low on HP so we um, we definitely want to try and get that up and you could buy this white chest I'm gonna elect not to because I have an ambush here ambush is gonna guarantee you an item and it's always gonna be blue or greater in rarity this one happens to be blue. And when you get it on this early in the dungeon, all you're really going to find in here on normal difficulty are the Rot Hounds and the Gnawlings. So it's a pretty easy room. Every once in a while you'll get one of the um, one of the humanoid looking things. I forget their name. but All right. So we've got a decision here. Enrage, plus five attack and plus five splash attack. This is a really great item. Uh, but I kind of want more equipment. Venom Guard is also a very good item. I don't really want to sacrifice the defense or the uh, speed right now. So I think I'm going to reroll. Soul Glass. Curse damage becomes soul gain instead. This is solid. I like the clarity that we get. It makes our potions more potent. Um, and the defense we get is very nice as well. Make, gives us better parry chance and uh, will make us take less damage from uh, targets that um, outscale our defense. Um, and here, this is a, a shop basically where you can buy a couple of items or take a potion for free. Since our heat shield uh, wore out, I'm actually going to pick up this force form. Now, knockback is something that takes a little while to get used to. The passive, this is the enemy I was talking about, the triad. Sometimes he'll show up in the in the um, in the ambush. Uh, but so forceful is pretty great. Uh, gain knockback, which will knock your the enemy back one one slot um, for the next five attacks. So if you look, it has a seven attack cooldown. But those five attacks still count towards those seven attack cooldowns. So this really only has a two turn cooldown. Uh, but so if I use it here, for example, and I attack, they get pushed back. Now what's great is you can attack explosive enemies. It'll push them back and then they explode. So it's like a pseudo explosive resistance. We have the freeze here. I don't want to waste it on the gnawling. So we're going to come over and hit this scrounger. Scroungers have loot. It doesn't really say it anywhere. Um, oh, there it is. Death effect drops loot. Got it. Uh, but anyways, 
You want to kill these guys before they get to the doors. Um, they're always going to try and go through... Let's see. Let's get him out of the way. Oh, another ambush. They're always going to try to go through the normal door. They won't go through any of these special exits. Um, so you want to make sure that you make your way to them because they're going to drop you stat bonuses and potions. Uh, so let's see what we got here. We'll go for a speed and an HP. I want a little bit more ta uh, tankiness in the form of HP and I want to keep my speed up. We have a free item, so we might as well take that. Um, let's re-roll it. Skull cap. Perfectly fine pickup. Some decent stats. We can kill that creature in one hit. Uh, we'll take another HP here. Bear trap. We get uh, basically 15 damage for free. So we're going to go ahead and use our pierce. Because that's going to give us uh, basically an effect where we ignore defense for the next three turns. So we can use that. And since we're just attacking one enemy, now we, we still have that effect on us. It doesn't say it anywhere, um, but we still have that effect. So if we can pick up Bear Trap, now we get the benefit of both. Um, so we'll take this potion even though we don't need it. And we'll go into the ambush. Again, you could pay for a white chest. I usually elect not to if I have another option be here being ambush. So we're going to head inside. Okay, so as you can see, we're getting a purple item for free, which... We're getting a purple item before room five. I mean, that's that's pretty significant. Um, since our speed is so high, we're not going to get poisoned from this enemy. We have a freeze available, so it doesn't really matter what enemy we use it on. We could pass, but we're just going to attack straight up. And we can kill both these enemies in one hit. And there we go. Our first purple item. Now, in this particular case, I really like endurance. It gives a lot of HP. And we might get something better, but we might not. So I'm just going to go ahead and take it. And this is where the uh, beginning of this tutorial is going to come to an end. But we'll finish this room. So as you can see now, we're getting some higher tier chests in the room with us. Um, so we're going to make our way around. We're going to use our forceful. Uh, but actually, we're not going to attack this here, because if we push him back, this one will get pushed into place and explode and kill us. You always have to watch these beads. They ended a lot of my runs early on. This is also another creature you need to be careful of. He has two forms where he's in his spike form, and he will, if you look at my health, he'll reflect the damage I do. Whereas if I move out and move back, now he's vulnerable. So I can just attack him directly. Unfortunately, with my forceful right now, uh, it's kind of tough to like stay on top of him. So we're going to see if we can kill this enemy, which we can. All right, our forceful has run out. We're taking a little bit of damage here, but that's fine. Um, since we have this cursed damage becomes soul gain, we can try this cursed potion. Because even if you see on my health bar, if it hurts us, it, well, it can't hurt us. It'll just give us souls. So it did heal us. And now he's got 10 HP. I'm just going to go ahead and take my bear trap and get rid of him. Uh, mainly for the sake of convenience. And now blue chests is where I start to usually pick up items by actually purchasing chests. Uh, we've got a purple one back there, but we can't afford it. So I would pick up the blue here. We have some souls to do some rerolls if we want. Um, I don't really like either of these items, so I'm going to go ahead and reroll. Uh, I don't really want either of these items, so I'm going to go ahead and reroll again. And let's see what we got. Intimidate creature on attack. Um, or core path dungeon spawn one random exit card. So oddly enough, this is a situation that um, I almost want to discard both just because I don't want to give up some of the stats that these are asking me to. But if if you're really bent on making the most out of the souls you spent on this, you know, on this chest, and I had to make a decision, I would probably go with false confidence because intimidate creature on attack is huge. Filling your slots is huge because if I get rid of boots for this, I'm losing 
a passive that I want. Um, and I'm getting some more stats, but in this situation I'm getting a bunch more stats and a new passive. Um, and that, that creates more synergy than just keep if you just keep replacing the same item. Uh, so we'll take Foss Confidence. Ferocity, we already have a better uh, relic in hand, so if you want, you could just discard that. And then detonate. Might as well pick it up. We have nothing else for the slot. Crossroads. And that would be the end of what I would consider the, the early game. Crossroads is kind of nice. Gives you some options um, for different paths you can take. If I were to continue this video, I would go into careful maneuver because on normal mode, there is almost always two scroungers in here or the little loot guys that'll drop um, some stats and potions for you. So that's going to be it. If you did enjoy uh, the video or you learned something maybe you didn't know, please leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know in the, in the comments if there's more things you would like to know about the game. I'm going to kind of tackle different aspects of the game one by one. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy and keep on playing Ring of Pain. So uh, until next time, we'll catch you.